Hi, this is Sean Sullivan from Technique Peak, and today I wanted to go over a long axis hip distraction, uh, which is a good technique that you can use if you think someone is presenting with intraarticular hip pain uh, and is starting to have some guarding or discomfort within the joint. This technique is pretty uh, low level, pretty benign, and can provide some good relief by creating distraction between the acetabulum and the femoral head, uh, and often helps relax muscles that might be tense around the hip joint. Uh, so it's a great technique to use early on, especially with a patient who has more pain or stiffness that you're trying to work through. Um, the setup is really important to get a, an effective stretch here. Um, so I like to use two belts. Um, the one on the table isn't always necessary, um, but if you feel like there's too much movement happening or you're not getting good stability at the pelvis, uh, the second belt around the pelvis can be helpful. Um, so when you're positioning this one, you want the belt to be just inferior to the ASIS so that it's preventing any pelvic sliding down on the table or even an anterior tip of the pelvis. Uh, when we go to pull the leg, we're pulling the femur and it's going to tip the pelvis anteriorly, um, which might cause pain or extension at the lower back. So by positioning this belt inferior to the ASIS, it's gonna catch it so that it doesn't rock forward and it'll keep a little bit of a posterior pelvic tilt, which is what we wanna promote while we're doing this stretch. Um, that belt has to be fairly snug, uh, otherwise they'll slide underneath and it won't do its job. So it's usually pretty comfortable as long as it's not on the bony prominence, um, but you first attach the belt to the table, inferior to the ASIS, make sure the patient's comfortable with that. Then you're gonna use a second belt to assist you with the pull so that if you're doing this technique over a period of five to 10 minutes, uh, your arms aren't getting tired from holding someone's leg. Uh, the leg can be very heavy, especially on certain patients, so you want to try to make it as easy as possible for yourself as a clinician. So to do the second belt, we do a figure eight loop around their ankle, and then we slide our hands into position there. Uh, the easiest way to do it is to take uh, the buckle side. So I like to have the strap in my left hand and the buckle in my right. We drop it over the front of their ankle and then loop around, and that creates the figure eight. And then this can be easily adjusted we need to lengthen it or tighten it to find the right position. So we position the belt here, slide our hands underneath the belt, and then wrap around. My grip uh, at the ankle is superior to his malleoli so that I'm not sliding down and uh, causing a tailor curl distraction, which might cause some ankle discomfort and might miss some of the stretch that we're going for through his hip bone. So I want to be superior to the um, malleoli. I'm gonna enter, or I'm gonna place my hands one over the other and compress with my hands, my thumbs pointing up towards his knee. And that way I'm not squeezing around his ankle, but I'm just creating a firm grip. And as I pull that figure eight with the belt is gonna push my hands together and give me a more solid grip. So again, it's not a grip. I'm not squeezing with my fingers, which might cause discomfort, but I'm gonna let my hand just kind of compress. And then as I lean back, we're gonna get a little bit of a stretch through his hip. Uh, so that's the belt positioning. This should also be uh, below my PSIS so that it's not on my lower back, but it's going to be in line with the direction of pull I want, uh, and it'll create a stable base for me so it's not uncomfortable for my back. When we're doing the stretch, uh, the goal is pain relief here, so we're looking to position his hip in the loose pack position, so it's going to be a little bit of flexion, a little bit of abduction, and a little bit of external rotation. I wanna make sure that his leg is heavy. If I feel that he's holding it, he's not gonna get a good distraction because his hip flexor is gonna be tense. Um, so I wanna make sure he's nice and relaxed. I'm gonna give it a couple of shakes, make sure I feel his leg heavy in my hand, position my hands superior to the malleoli, overlay my hands, start to lean a little bit with the belt. As I pull back, I'm starting with a gentle pull and I'm watching to make sure my belt is picking up the slack of his pelvis. And then as I go from there, it should feel like a nice stretch and you're asking the patient what they're feeling in this position, they should feel like a light pull or a decompression in their hip joint. It's not a major stretch, like a muscle stretch, um, but more of a joint separation or decompression. I might do a couple of shakes in between to make sure he's staying relaxed. And then we're gonna do the same thing. Gentle pull on and off about five to 10 seconds on and then off in between. That's the hip distraction stretch.